Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to another monster video. So, in today's video, we are going to be reviewing the monster Holiday. Uh, this mythic monster is currently available in game. You can obtain it free to play just by breeding the monster. And besides that, you can actually obtain this monster through the team event where your teammate, either you or your teammates, could actually purchase gem packs, and that will basically reward everybody in the team with sales for this monster. So, I hope you guys are excited for today's video. If you are, smash the like button, subscribe, channel to get on. Anyways, let's go on and get started. All right, guys. So, we have a rank one level 115 kaladin here and i am super excited to actually review this monster because first of all it is an attacker it's a dark attacker and it's one of those orc monsters so as you guys can see it does have that orc trait so all status effect have a 25 percent less accuracy against it you also have this immunity to bleed which is all right i guess same with the orc honestly not really a huge fan but besides all of that you do have this status because of true vision which is which isn't that bad so in case if the enemy hits you with like days or something like that you're still fine because you have that true vision you know what i mean so true vision is actually better than precision um and i yeah i mean it's not bad but these two these two could have been better honestly um like for example true vision could have been a trait right here and then there could have been like a 25 percent damage boost as a trait or something or status caster i don't know but i i'm not really a huge fan of the traits i feel like that could have been better but in terms of stats you get about 13,550 at level 115 which isn't that bad that's actually pretty good same with the speed that i noticed actually 8,975 that's pretty good and then you have 166,111 um life so anyways, guys, let's go ahead and get into the skills. Before we get into the skills, this is the ultimate. So, off with your heads. It removes 100% of total life from one enemy and 50% of total life from all enemies. It removes 100% of stamina from itself. Oh my goodness, that is an insane ultimate. That is actually insane. <laughs> that ultimate is really scary. Anyways, cutthroat. Okay, deals very heavy dark damage to an enemy, applies bleed and... 3 turn death count on 20 enemies. You're dealing quite a lot of damage. Bleeding comes with it, which is a torture, you know, dealing some damage every turn and then also making the enemy weak. And on top of that, death count that they have to basically cleanse or else they end up dying. Um, unless they're immune to it, of course. Anyways, Skullcracker. Deals moderate metal damage while enemies removes shields and applies vulnerability. I just wish that the removing shield came first so you don't really deal the damage first, you know what I mean? That would have been a lot better. Uh, but you know what? That's not bad, I guess. Um, so definitely run that skill right there. Let's see what else we have, though. Like Butter applies vulnerability to one enemy and applies Bleed Hater to itself. Sadly, it doesn't give you an extra turn. I feel like it would have been a lot better if it gave you an extra turn, but that's not a thing. Uh, Nosebreaker deals heavy dark damage to one enemy, removes shield from one enemy, applies bleeding to one enemy. There we go. Again, this is basically like a single target of this. Um, sorry, this one right here. Where the heck is it? Yeah, yeah. So this is basically a single target of this. It's just that this one comes with vulnerability. This one comes with bleeding. And this is a dark element versus a metal. And one's an AoE, the other one's single target. Uh, but they're pretty similar. Anyways, Bloodlust gives 100% of stamina, uh, applies double damage, and a 3 turn death countdown to itself. So this is all for yourself, by the way. You know, applying the death countdown, double damage, and 100% stamina. So this is a little scary. If you want to run it, you can. But you can run some other monster on your side that can always just cleanse the death countdown if you want. You know what I mean? So it's not a bad skill, but it can be kind of scary. So just make sure you have a plan. S Lash. Okay, I see what they did there with that. The Osmari Dark Damage Wall Enemies applies precision to all allies. Oh, that's not bad, actually. Um, Actually, you know what? Okay, so here's the thing. If you're going to pair this monster up with any monsters with, like... Well, actually, you don't even really have to because this monster does have bleeding skills already. Um, This skill isn't bad because it gives, it gives you that triple damage, you know, against bleeding. If any monster is bleeding, you know what I mean? And also, vulnerability to an enemy. So, this can be good. But it'll take you a turn before you actually deal your damage. S slash isn't bad at all either. So if you want to run it, you can. You have this skill right here, which is a zero stamina, zero cooldown. You deal some damage. It's a metal damage, by the way. And you apply true vision to yourself. And last but not least, strong grip. Deals moderate dark damage to one enemy, applies bleeding to one enemy. This requires you ten, to have 10 stamina and zero cooldown. So basically, you can kind of spam that as long as you have that stamina. You know what I mean? Uh, but overall, I feel like these are probably his best skills you can run, actually. Um, besides maybe running Bloodlust over one of them or even S Slash. But that's, yeah, that's pretty much it with the skills. In terms of skills let's get into the 
talents. Okay, for attacker, sword is really good. So you can run like Voltic Sword if you want. You can do Lord Devatos if you want. Um, Wingsu Sword. And last but not least, these two. So La Laser Beam Sword also works out. And also Kane Sword. Whichever one you want to run, you can. I'm probably going to do Laser Beam Sword, honestly. And then you also have Mask. So for Mask, my one of my favorite masks right now. Actually, my favorite, my top favorite is this one right here. Tetsumet's Mask. I do recommend running this. Okay, so this will basically remove stamina and also give you stamina whenever you need it. Uh, Raijin's Mask is also there if you want to play around with that. There's also Dream's Mask. Um, Eeltron's Mask also works. There's also Talonite's Mask and so on, right? But in my personal opinion, uh, Talonite's Mask works best for this monster. So you can kind of regenerate stamina whenever you need it. And also you drain stamina from the enemy. But anyways, in terms of talent, there are a couple you can actually go with. If you want to do this one, the Seven Sins, which is actually one of the new ones, go for it. Uh, most of the new ones actually works with this monster, like even Spear of Destiny if you want to do that. It's kind of like Kill Streak from the Metropolitan era talent, you know what I mean? Um, you can also do Burn Blood because I know many of you guys do have that. You can do Demon Wings. And then there's also Dragon Soul with the Anticipation Cloak if you want to run that. Those can be really good as well. Um, but sadly I don't have these ones yet, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to personally maybe run like Demon Wings. Sure, why not? Let's do Demon Wings. All right, guys. So here we're on an adventure map, and before I get into the battle, before I press fight, I do want to mention uh, for the runes, I recommend giving two strength and one speed, something like this, or you can go ahead and give in two speed and one strength. That also works out. If you want to make it even more powerful, you can do triple strength, but that's gonna make monster kind of slow. So it's really up to you if you want to run that, if you want to take that path. But me personally, I'm gonna go with this. Um, so let's go ahead and fight here. We're just running two tanks on our uh, on our team, you know what I mean? These two taunt monsters. And we just have our attacker because why not? I don't want any other monsters, you know what I mean? So here we go. Let's see. Um, so we do have that 25% damage boost from the poison beast. Um, let's see if we could get anything else with this. Imagine we got like triple damage or something. Look at this. Uh, so the 50, sorry, not the 50, the 25% damage boost alone with the Skullcracker. This is an AoE 40% uh, damage, 40% uh, power skill. And look at this. It literally just eliminates them all. 78k damage to everybody. Laser Beam Sword on top of that because remember it makes them vulnerable. So like that's pretty sweet together. You know what I mean? Um, let me see. I'll go ahead and do this. Protect positive and what else? Medium shield. Okay um let's do this for fun i don't know so now what we're gonna do is start with the light butter so this applies vulnerability with the bleeding hater so triple damage and vulnerability so look at this look at it all right triple damage right there because of the bleeding hater right and it lasts for three turns so what i can do here is charge up charge up and now that it's my turn both of these skills will deal quite a large damage against this monster not that because it's vulnerable but also because of the Triple damage, the bleeding hater. Look at this. So if I do cutthroat, which is a 60% single target, by the way, this is probably his most powerful skill. Look at that. 177k damage. Now keep in mind, this monster is a level 115 with just two level 5 strength runes. That's crazy, isn't it? And <laughs> we're just going to go ahead and end off them with that monster. So it doesn't really matter what element you really go up against because this monster, remember, carries vulnerability skills with him so that's pretty sweet so you can always just go ahead and make him weak against you so that you can deal quite a lot of damage to them so here we come with the shield um i'm gonna go ahead and do this hopefully we get something else never mind okay i thought i was gonna get like triple damage or double damage okay so here we're gonna start off with this again i just wish that the vulnerability was to everybody now imagine that imagine vulnerability to everybody bleeding hater to yourself and maybe even an extra turn that would have been so op this monster would have been definitely meta I'm not saying that it's not going to be meta. I mean, who knows? Maybe it'll enter the meta. But right now, like, just imagine if that was a thing. Um, so we're just going to do the AoE skill. And remember, any of my skills will be basically dealing uh, a large damage to this monster because of vulnerability and also bleeding hater. Look at the amount of damage I'm going to deal. 136k damage versus all of that, which is like 45k each to those guys now watch this okay so this time i'm running the do you could also do the dragon if you have the dragon um but this is just because on the second wave after we beat this one there will be um that this one other monster that you guys will see in just a second so here we're gonna do this aoe skill deal a lot of damage to them it comes with uh, i mean poison is just from our beast but the vulnerability as you guys can see is there we're gonna save our aoe trade disable although this one is also another trade disable that we have we're gonna actually use the aoe one here so even my other monster will be able to deal more damage because of the vulnerability there all right so look at that 
so much damage all right so we eliminated fully now the thing is guys um the reason why i mentioned that earlier why i'm carrying a trade disabler with me here is because if we end up or if we try to apply this vulnerability with the bleeding hitter it won't really work out because it's an artifact monster so that's something you have to kind of watch out from you know what i mean um so you will have to basically trade a table it with this monster right here uh, but what i'm going to do is actually do this sadly the thing that i'm laying right there the burning so we can't really do much we're just going to go and charge up i oh the monster just controlled us okay um i thought he'd actually go with something different um let me go ahead and charge up here we're gonna go ahead and do this and you know what let me see we're gonna do this eliminate you and we can actually give damage boost with precision but yeah the precision of damage boost will last for about three turns so that's good and here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna charge up i could have also went with uh, damage section there but i didn't really need it so normally you see how i can't really deal too much damage because it's an artifact and also my death countdown won't really apply same with the tortures so what i can do is go with this for now the bleeding hater and then what I can do is do this, but sadly there won't be um, there won't be vulnerability. So you might as well trade table at first, go with that skill, and then the turn after you can go ahead and deal more damage to them because the bleeding will be applied to them. You know what I mean? I just wish the bleeding was applied to there first, and then he dealt the damage. That way it would have been more powerful, if you guys know what I mean. But anyways, there we go, eliminated. <laughs> so overall, what do I think about this monster? Well, personally, I don't really think this monster will be meta. Um, it is actually a pretty powerful monster, but I'd say I prefer Lord Inheritor over this monster because it comes more than one dark element. You know what I mean? So Lord Inheritor also has dark element, so does this monster, and then that monster also comes with fire element, you know, and that monster is actually like an S tier versus this that just basically um, got added into the game. So I guess we could give it some time and see where this monster could actually go. But I mean, again, the curse countdown can just be cleansed very easily. Um, and then this vulnerability with bleeding hater it doesn't like doesn't give you an extra turn or anything like that, which kind of sucks. Uh, the vulnerability that is really nice. I do like that. But again, we do have better attackers, better dark attackers like Lauren Herder. Uh, but as a free to play attacker, it's pretty good. So for those free to play players out there, this monster will definitely help you out quite a lot. But that's going to be pretty much it for today's Monster Gen Monster Review on the Monster Paladin. I hope you guys did enjoy, and if you did, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, to your sign, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.